man, that's a good song right there. Hope you like that one. Can you hear me okay, all you out there in YouTube land? I think I got it turned up enough. We'll crank it up just a little bit more here to make sure. Because some of you are hard of hearing. So I got to turn this up a little bit just to make sure that you can hear me. Because some of you are hard of hearing. Or maybe it's hard hearted. But I hope it's just hard of hearing. I hope that's all it is. Anyway, uh, but uh, we are going to talk about a lot of fun things today here this afternoon. Ouch, my back hurts. Pray for my back, my old, poor, aching back uh, that uh, I don't know how I injured. I tell you how I injured it. I waited too long to go back to the chiropractor. I have to go. I waited. I should go once a month. That's all I really need to go. If I go once a month, I'm fine. If I don't, then if I wait too long, then it doesn't go well for me. Uh, anyway, so what do we got going on here in YouTube land? We've got 37 on here. Hope to have more on here. Got a bunch of videos for you that I want to talk to you about. We're going to talk about Acts chapter 8 today too, and we're going to discuss Acts chapter 8. In the light of the context of the issue of the charismatic movement, because I was going to preach on this, but I decided, you know, I wasn't really going to, I didn't really want to spend a whole lot of time in the pulpit dealing with this. It's easier to do it in a broadcast like this, because I can bring in videos, I can do that, and I could do that technically. We could find a way for me to do that. I know we have those capabilities, but our... Uh, Old Pass Baptist Church has been thoroughly and duly warned of the charismatic movement, and uh, and we we go over that and talk about those things. And you know, I I have dealt with it in this series so much that I really I I'm gonna just always be adding to this series some more in dealing with the charismatic movement. And the reason I'm gonna do that is because. There's always so much more. And when the scriptures, when you open the Bible up, you actually see that, hey, guess what? There's more that happened in the book of Acts concerning charismania and that it's not new. None of it is new. So let me say hi first to a few of you. Andrea, number one, Andrea, I think she's made number one quite a bit. In, in OPBC Lives, I think she has made number one quite a bit. Eli Morgan has. Jacob with his, hey, Pastor. Uh, he He's on there. Or alias J. Cobb. Or, or if you have the meme version of Jacob, then... I have many versions of Jacob out there. I have staking with Jake. I have trucking with Jake. Oh, I'm trying to think of the other ones. Now I can't think of it. Man, there's there's so many of them. When he was sick, I could have done yakking with Jake. But anyway. Um, let's see who else is on here. Carl Winters. The... Do we really know if that's Carl Winters? Do we really know? The man has 850 accounts. We'll, we'll just take for granted that that is Carl Winters. Daryl and Teresa. The Sullivan kid. When's that kid ever going to grow up anyway? Still a kid. The Sullivan kid. What's going on with that? Are you going to be like 60 and be like the Sullivan kid? I wonder if I can do that. Probably not. I have too much gray hair to do that. See, she doesn't have gray hair like me, so she doesn't have to worry about that. Anyway, Joe McDonald on his farm. My dad's on there. Trucking through Illinois. There's my wife is on there. Texas Cindy, not to be confused with other Cindy's. Apparently, people with the with women with the name Cindy... Enjoy listening to OPBC online. 
because we have a lot of Cindy's that listen. The Authorized Mike. Now, this man's name is Brother Mud. You know it's dangerous when your name is Mud. That's a real name, Brother Mud. The world is enmity with God. Good morning. Let's see. Uh, Franklin Lavelle. I found the sermon I emailed you about a little while back. Okay, Franklin. I don't know what you're talking about. You have to understand something. I have a very bad memory. Except when it comes to memorizing scripture, I found out I can throw that in by the grace of God into my mind, into that, 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 that wheel of my mind and throw it in there and I can memorize chapters at a time with it. It's absolutely phenomenal. It's the way my anxiety works. It just loops around my mind, and it just throws it in there, and automatically the Lord just allows me to be able to memorize Scripture. Isn't that something? Now, I don't know your name, and I don't know the fact that you got a hold of me a week or two, a month, a year ago. I can't remember. You all act like I'm going to remember that. I'm not going to remember that. Let's see. Betty. Betty's on there. Eli Morgan. We already talked about him. Is it really Eli? Helen Green. I know that name. Helen Green. Oh, I know who that is. That's not really Helen. I know who that is. Okay. Well, it's good to have you on here for sure, my friend. It's been a long time. I know you were on here about a month ago or so, but... uh, You've been around for a long time. I hope your children are doing well. Let's see. Oh, yeah, strumming with Jake. Yep, that's right, steak and Jake. Yep, yep, yep. And Missouri Mom. There's only millions of those, so how would you ever know, right? It is like a national Cindy convention here sometimes. And he is, Jake is trucking in St. Paul. And Tracy shows up. Tracy M. Excuse me while I drink my string here of my tea. There, let's move that over there. That would be good. All right. Today I'll be sampling. (laughs) Today I'm sampling cinnamon black tea. No more of that green stuff. I'm tired of that green stuff. That stuff tastes like you're eating grass. I don't know who wants green tea, but they can have it. I don't need any of that stuff. I know, Helen. I know who you are. And then Ross Duncan from Scotland. I know, I'm different than everybody else. They get on, they get to business, and they don't talk to any of you. And that's their business. They can do that. I do things a little bit different and make tons of people mad at me. Look, is he ever going to get to the topic we're, we're, we're talking about? I mean, I would keep listening, but he doesn't get to the topic right away. Okay. Well, then, matcha. Is that like macho man tea? Is that... Is that what that's called? Is macho matcha tea? They got to sell that in Texas, don't they? Authorized Mike, that's got to be Texas tea right there, matcha. Although Texas tea is oil, isn't it? Or how they say it down there, oil. Oil. That's how they say that down there. Oil. It's super good for you. Well, then it probably tastes terrible. That's probably what it is. It tastes terrible. Better camera angle. Come on. Listen, 
This morning's was on my cell phone. It was it was just a quick one. That's all it was about. It wasn't about anything else. It was about Trump. They're going to be different than these broadcasts. You know why? Because I don't have anybody to quickly edit the video for me and take it off of this broadcast, edit it, and put it on a separate one. So I just have to quickly do it myself on a video like that. Now, I could have done it from here, but you're all too spoiled, so I can't spoil you with the three-screen display. I got to quit doing that because then you just get too spoiled. Right? Look, I'm going back to the camera angle that looks down on you. That's it, Eli. I'm doing that from now on. Hello from Las Vegas, Nevada. Well, Marcia Eaton. I've never been to Nevada. I wonder what Nevada's like here. I'd like to know what. I think it's like a desert. And they have lots of gambling. I quit gambling when I got saved. I remember before I was saved, though, I used to I used to go gambling. What a mess that was. What a life that is. All right. Well, I guess I've said hi to most of the people on here. If I missed you, it wasn't intentional. Uh, Carl, you don't realize how much affects you when you pull out teeth. Even my speech. I sound like a drunk cartoon. Well... Sorry to hear that. All right, here we go. They just released 5G where in, in in Las Vegas in the desert where nobody is. Is it killing owls yet or it could kill snakes. If 5G kills snakes, it might be the only redeeming quality it has. I hate snakes. Please don't go to Nevada. I, I don't think I will, Helen. <laughs> Jelena. I keep calling you Helen. Anyway. Well, let's get started, shall we? Shall we get started with the scary history? Let's start with the Word of God. So let's open the Bible up here. If you have a virtual Bible, you can open it. I use this so you can see it. I do like my preaching Bible. You know, I never thought I'd be the guy that was had like the preaching Bible, that it was the main one all the time. I never thought I would. And then after time went by, I started to gravitate towards one Bible that I had. And I didn't want to use, you know, the various other ones that I had. I'm not talking about the version of the Bible. I'm talking about the specific Bible itself, the binding or whatever. So somebody gave me that Bible years ago, and I've had a lot of people that have given me different Bibles. I have a lot, a number of different uh, Bibles. Uh, some of them have notes in them. Some of them are note takers Bible. Some of them are different. My wife gave me a long time ago a lambskin note takers Bible, and I have it somewhere over there, and it is made out of lambskin and it is thick. And after I've done with this one and I use it all up, I might go to that one again and use that one. Anyway, so we need to go to Acts chapter 8. That's right. Now, I'm going to make no bones about it, and I want to be very clear. If you're looking at the 20-minute mark is when this starts. So in the description of the video, I could put, if you don't want to hear me talk to everybody, then 20 minutes in, I'll start the teaching. That way, for those poor people that don't like to hear from me, only to hear the knowledge that I want to give them, and they don't want to hear anything else. They don't want to hear about any of you. Anyway. But here we go. We're going to talk about Simon the Sorcerer. And I thought about Simon the Sorcerer as I've been preaching through the book of Acts, Acts chapter 8. Tonight will be the, I don't know, fourth I think it's the fourth message. Maybe it's the third. I don't know. I can't remember. But I got it in my notes somewhere. And Simon the Sorcerer was such a unique uh, person. Now, I've had experiences with people like Simon the Sorcerer. So 
I know that they still exist in churches today. I, I'm not going to get into that because it doesn't edify the Lord to, to bring up all that stuff. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm not out to hurt anybody. So, uh, but the thing, the thing is, is that I understand the experience. I understand how you can be deceived. And, um, how very hurtful that can be actually anyway but uh, and our church understands that uh but look at this there's a great revival so let me let me set up the occasion here and then i want to show you the comparisons of the modern day charismatic movement they are sorcerers and they're after the same thing that simon the sorcerer was after simon the sorcerer would be that anti-peter or, or even you could call him a, 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 like an antichrist. I thought it was interesting that Simon's name, Simon Peter, his name was Simon the Sorcerer. Um, Peter's first name or original name was Simon. Simon, Simon, Satan hath sought thee, uh, hath desired to have thee to sift thee as wheat, said Jesus to Simon Peter. Boy, there's a big difference in that one. So there's a revival going on, and Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church, which is at Jerusalem, and they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. Now, you would think that the that that the gist of the uh, the controversy would be over. Um, you would think that it would be, uh, or you know. Saul is killing people, so therefore that's how Satan's working. But that's not all Satan is doing. And devout men carried Stephen to his burial and made great lamentation over him. Here's what you have to be careful of. Satan, in a church, in your family, in your home, he will first always try to attack from without. And then after he does that over and over and over again, it reminds me of Mike Tyson's punch out. Does anybody remember Mike Tyson's punch out? I remember Mike Tyson's punch out. You went boom, boom, boom. Remember when the guy would twiddle his mustache? Ding, ling, ding, ding, ding. And then you boom, you just suck him a good one with that super punch and you'd take him out. As you're working your way up to fight Mike Tyson. And Mike Tyson was like a Nephilim. By the time you got up to Mike Tyson, you were that big, and Mike Tyson was like that big. His head was bigger than your entire body. Dude, was he big. Anyway, um, but uh, when you're a kid, you're like, whoa, that guy is humongous. Well, that's how Satan is in that sense. He keeps punching you until you're startled. And he'll keep hitting you and hitting you and hitting you from the outside until you're startled. Then he moves in for the kill. Glass Joe! Eli Morgan is giving me flashbacks. So. All right. This is what happened. Satan was hitting them from the outside with Saul. Persecution was coming. But here's what happens. And we have to be careful. We can experience this in a church. We've experienced this to a degree at Old Paths before and other churches, but your home can experience it too. It's not any different than that in that sense. The principles are the same. That you can be looking for the attack so much on the outside that you don't see that uppercut from the inside. And see, that's what happened here. As we read on, you're going to see that. So Saul, they're looking for that open persecution. Seer, they all must be broad, went everywhere preaching the word. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria, who preached Christ unto them. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. So he went and preached the gospel. He preached the Lord Jesus Christ to them. That's what he did. Amen. That's how people get saved. They don't get saved preaching the gifts. Do you understand that? You're going to see what these people are preaching. And they don't get edified either by preaching the gifts all the time. Or the gifts of the Spirit. The transition, the transitional gifts that were given. Those temporary gifts that were given. 
No. And you're going to see that Philip preached Christ. For unclean spirits cried with a loud voice, came out of many that were possessed. Look, it says, And the people with one accord gave heed unto those things which Philip spake, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. But they gave heed to the things which he spake. For unclean spirits crying with a loud voice came out with many that were possessed with them, and many had taken with palsy, many taken with palsies, and that were lame were healed. And there was a great joy in the city. But, uh-oh. Okay, so all these people are getting saved. Revival hit. And then, but... Every time that comes up, there's a controversy. There's, there's a contrast, I should say. There's a contrast that comes up. And what is that contrast? Simon. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery. And bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one. Okay. Now watch this. People flock to this great one. You know, you know, there's some antichrist figures in the media today that are out there right now that use some of these same phrases. Remember the remember the rock? How about how about uh how about the rock? Who's the rock? Well, Jesus Christ is the rock. But this man calls himself the Rocky Mayavia or uh, I forget what his real name is. Um, Dwayne. He calls himself the rock. He also calls himself the great one. Think about that. But he made himself out to be some great one to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard because out of a long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. So, in essence, I've heard, I think I've heard Stephen Anderson try to say that, that Simon the sorcerer was, was saved. Now, I think C Stephen Anderson has rocks in his head. And he did a video about me the other day. And he said that basically, or he revamped a video about me the other day, and somebody told me about it. I didn't watch it, but somebody else watched it, I guess. I don't really care that much, but but he he said, Baptist preachers that will be in hell. And he, I guess he listed me as one of those. Me and Spurgeon. Look, how come me and Charlie always get it, man? It's like me and Charlie, me and Paul Washer. What's up with that? We're always getting it, man. <laughs> oh, it's kind of funny. If it wasn't sad. Yeah, the people's champ, that's another one. That's right. Yeah, Anderson saying Simon was saved when he hath no part nor lot in this matter of the Holy Ghost means that Anderson does not know how to does not understand scripture nor does he understand salvation. And I'm telling you, I used okay, here's what I have a problem with him with. For all the stuff that he's done, that man has never been humbled by God. And when someone like that has never been humbled like God, by God, when they've never been humbled by the Lord, I have a hard time believing when they're when they act that way I question whether because of his understanding of the gospel not because if he makes a mistake or he sins but because he doesn't understand the gospel he doesn't understand repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ so I I think the man is lost if he's not lost, he's extremely deceived. And I don't understand how you could be that deceived on the doctrine of salvation. So, anyway. Um, 
Simon was called on, if you look at this, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard, because out of a long time he had bewitched them with their sorceries. But when they believed Philip preaching and things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also. And when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who when they were come down prayed for them, that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of Jesus, the name of the Lord Jesus. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost, but not on Simon. Not on Simon. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. Saying, Give me also this power that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, Thy money perish with thee. Well, that's pretty stern, isn't it? Thy money perish with thee. Thou hast neither part nor lot in this matter, for thy heart is not right in the sight of God. Repent, therefore, of this thy wickedness, and pray, God, if perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. For I perceive that thou art in the gall of bitterness and in the bond of iniquity. Then answered Simon and said, Pray ye to the Lord for me that none of these things which have ye have spoken come upon me. Wait a minute. Simon didn't say... Simon didn't say, Lord, forgive me for what I've done. He didn't say, I'm sorry that I did that. He said, just pray that none of this stuff comes. I don't want the judgment for any of this. So, but my point is not in the sense of Simon as much as it is you yourself uphold Christmas and even say that it that it isn't pagan, which should which you uphold it, so but don't claim it isn't pagan holiday, for you know better. What in the world? So this person named Swipe Bravo swiped my my Facebook or my YouTube account here. He's come over here. And he makes an accusation that I follow, that I, I celebrate Christmas. Has he not seen all of my sermons against it? Really? You've not seen Merry Christmas, you hypocrites? <laughs> you've, never, you've never seen my sermons on the Christmas spirit? And why I don't celebrate Christmas? Okay. So Simon. What did Simon want? Simon, what he wanted was power. Give me also this power. That whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. Why? Because he was a sorcerer and he hadn't changed. That's why. He's a sorcerer and he never changed. Now, do you find it interesting that the, that the counterfeit is so close to the original? I want to show you something from... Let's see, is it this one? Hang on a second here. It's the, I want to show you the, this one. He's talking about, this is a false anointing. 
you know, there is this anointing, and he's about ready to talk about this. There's this anointing that they that the charismatics talk about. And this anointing is the same, it's the same concept as Samuel, or as, as uh, um, not Samuel, Simon the sorcerer taught. This is that same anointing. And I'm going to show you in consecutive videos, all these people, they're telling people that they need the gifts. That's what they need. Not a changed life. Not walking in the fear of the Lord. Not the spirit of the Lord walking in the fear of the Lord. But they need the anointer. Right? The moment, I'm, I'm going to get away from this Baptist lady if I can. Now notice, he had to mention the Baptist. And here's the reason why. Because Baptists historically have never believed in this garbage. And they know that. They know that Baptists do not hold to the continuation of these sign gifts, and especially not these false ones. And that's what bothers them the most. I'm going to tell you why. Because Baptists have historically believed that the Bible is the only rule of faith and practice, the sole authority for faith and practice. Not your feelings, not your emotions, not the way you feel. Were you Southern Baptist? Was she, was she Southern? Huh? Independent Baptist. I think she's an orbital Baptist now. Now, let me ask you, I do believe there's an anointing here. I do believe there's an anointing here. It's a satanic one. Because could you tell me spiritually how this profits anybody? Reminds me of the very first year we were here, we were preaching in, in Virginia, Danville, Virginia. And a man came, he, he was a primitive Baptist. Well, I didn't even know there was a primitive Baptist. <laughs> I didn't know what a primitive Baptist was. I thought, they don't use cars, you know, they walk everywhere. I didn't know, what's a primitive Baptist? Like a prehistoric Baptist. <laughs> that are baptized of water, they use mist. I, I didn't know. And so while I was preaching, he kept sitting there going, Give it to him, Jesus. Uh, give it to him, Jesus. Uh, give it to him, Jesus. Uh. And I kept preaching and talked about hunger. And then he flipped it to, Give it to me, Jesus. Uh, give it to me, Jesus. Uh. So I called him out. And I said, lift your hands. The power of God hit him. He did a backward somersault and landed back on his feet. I never saw. Okay, so tell me how a backward somersault is the power of God. How would a backward somersault show the power of God? I saw anything like it in my life. I thought this guy ain't no primitive Baptist. He's an advanced Baptist. He's, this guy's further than any Baptist to boldly go where no Baptist gone before to brave new God. What that guy was doing and what that guy was teaching and, and whatever anointing that guy received, it was not an anointing from the Lord. It was not an anointing from God.
I mean, he wasn't like young. He was like late 50s, 60s. I mean, a back with summers on. And he's standing there looking at me. I thought, I ain't never seen. I've been around the world. I've never seen anything like that in my life. I said, you, sir, you're not primitive. You're way advanced. <laughs> now, let me just say that I want to talk to the River Church members and stuff. It is some precious members you've been coming for. So, in other words, basically, it's all about a gift. It's all about something they can play with. It's all about something that that they believe that they're doing. And if you listen to what he's saying here, he's not saying anything different than Simon the Sorcerer did. He wants them to lust after those. He wants them to run after those gifts like Simon did, the father of this ancient charismatic movement. The same thing. For years. And, and, and every service, you'll just sit. And I know that you love us because you're here all the time. I know that you love the church because you're members of the church. But you just said, it's like, I don't know what you're waiting for. Well, pastor will call me out and he'll wave and say, no, that's not how this thing works. And it's not that the Lord doesn't want to touch you. He does. So you can't sit here and say it. Well, that's just for a few extreme cases. But I want to challenge you. I want to challenge everyone that just has sits here meeting after meeting through all the camp meetings and everything. You have nothing to lose. Yes, they do. They're souls. Because once they give themselves over to this nonsense, once they give themselves over to this, many of them don't ever get right. Many of them can never be saved. Many of them have no zeal for the Lord, for holiness, for separation, for godly fear, for sanctification, for walking in the Spirit, for following God's book. It's always... They're fighting some devils somewhere. They're fighting some demons. They're fighting the demon of, of pretzels, uh, the demon of spaghetti, uh, the, 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 the demon of anger, the demon of this, the demon of that. And it's always, everything is about this. If you notice, these guys are nothing more than, than pro, um, they're nothing more than, uh, what would you call them? Motivational speakers. That's all that they are. That's all that they ever become. And they only push it with a satanic slant or a demonic slant that is more deceptive. Like Simon the Sorcerer. Look, Anderson is deceived by Simon the Sorcerer. He's deceived into thinking that's biblical salvation. What Simon the Sorcerer was. Why? Because he's deceived. You're already guilty by association. <laughs> you might as well just get everything. And I know some of you are concerned that if you let it go, it's like the sleeping bag that you buy at Walmart. You buy the sleeping bag and you let it out of the bag, but you can never put it back again. You fold, you roll it, you can't get it back. And you're afraid that if it comes out, I'll never get it back. So you're just holding on to it. Okay, so basically the Holy Ghost and the power of God, none of that, all that has to do with is the fun and games. Because if you got saved by the grace of God, uh, and, and you get the Holy Ghost anointing, if you get that extra anointing, guess what they're saying? Basically, you're going to laugh like a fool like this.
and they sit there and they and they laugh like this, like fools. But what is that? Does that look like any anointing? Look at this text again. But when they believed Philip preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God, the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon believed also when he was baptized. He continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. See, Simon's whole focus was wonder. Oh. How does he do that? I need to get me some of that. Now, when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent unto them Peter and John, who, when they were come down, prayed for them, they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them, only they were baptized in the name of Jesus, Lord Jesus. Then laid they their hands on them, and they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through the laying on of the hands of the apostles, laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money. So none of that foolishness that you just saw right there accompanies the gift of the Holy Spirit or the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. Right, and Philip laughed uncontrollably because of the anointing. Let's see here. So let's go back to that. You compare the two. But let me say that I'm your pastor. I'm not going to think any less of you. I want you to enjoy. It's like a swimming pool on a hot day where you take somebody, you throw them in. I just want to take you and just throw you in. Every one of you, throw you in. Throw you in. Think about that. So... You look at that. Do you know real people go through real sorrows and God sends them to the house of sorrow sometimes? God sends them there. Sometimes God wants us to be sorrowful. But what you see with these people are that, well, you're, I just want you to have that joy, and joy means that you're laughing all the time and you're acting like a, a fool. You're acting like you're tripping on acid. You're acting like you're drunk all the time. Where do we see that in the Bible? We don't. We don't see it in the Bible. Why not? Because it's not biblical, that's why. <laughs> Remember what I prayed up front. Not ankle deep, not knee deep, not waist deep, but in over your head. You know, that is nothing but a sign of de devil possession. That's all that is right there. All that is is like devil possession. It's not real. In the, It's not a real anointing from God. I believe it's real what's happening to them. 
these are false prophets. And they have with them an anointing. They have an anointing. This is a businessman, a dignified businessman in the church that's reaching into the upper echelons. This is what they call receiving the Holy Ghost. This is what they believe the gifts are. We're not here to be acceptable to other people. We, this is already in the Bible. It's already... That's why I read you, Paul saying, if we are beside ourselves, it's under God. The only reason I'm in my right mind, and I know this is debatable with some people, but it's for your benefit. Otherwise, I would be there on the floor with them. So this is, this is what we find in the New Testament is this. And nobody asks, nobody asks where you can find this in the Bible. In and 11. Paradise. I was preaching up in Chicago. The year was 1990, back in the last century. And I was speaking in a Spanish church. About a thousand people were there. And I've, I knew very nothing in Spanish, you know. I got a few words now, but I knew nothing back then. And I was walking around just speaking other tongues. And somebody come to me and said, you're speaking perfect Spanish. I said, I am. She, I said, what am I saying? She, she said, you keep telling the people, come to the paradise. Come to the paradise. Come to the paradise of God. Come to the paradise. Come to the paradise. Come to the paradise of God. Come, come. Wow. <laughs> Silly women laden with sins. So that so that's a work of God. Let me tell you something. Let's contrast this with with someone having a wayward child that's on their way to hell. With someone that that is losing their job, somebody that's lost their their income, somebody that's that's lost a child, somebody Christians that have to get through real life, okay? Christians that have to get through life. Let's contrast that with this. Is this going to help you get through life? Or is knowing and having a deep walk with the Lord Jesus Christ going to get you through life? Gloria a Dios. Paradiso. Is that a word? Hey! They act like, the, I, I'm serious, this is like the WWF. That's what it's like. I've never seen anything so squirrely in my life. And having a form of godliness. Heaven is not lesser than this. Heaven is greater. God 
just gives us tastes. Somebody's That's not a taste of heaven right there. A taste of heaven is not belligerently laughing. That's not heaven. Well, I wish he would just do it all now. You could even live. We'd all go to heaven immediately. Because this physical body could not handle. Hey, does anybody see repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ? Sanctification, holiness, sober-mindedness, separation from sin, godly fear. Walking and getting through trials of this life. No. Why? Because none of this nonsense is going to help you. But what is it? It's the Simon the Sorcerer stuff. Gosso, 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 gosso. Gazuntite. Gosso, gosso. It's like people look like they're praying. I'm like, what are you praying for? For him to shut up or what? For him to get saved by the grace of God? For him to turn from his sin and this nonsense? If you want to find out about the River Bible Institute, come see the prince. Be like weeping. Then just go ahead and weep, you know? It's not a physical manifestation because we've done this for many years. You can fall down every day. You can roll in the floor every day. It's about really receiving a touch from heaven. Okay, so how do they receive a touch from heaven? You sitting around and talking about stories about people doing somersaults? Or is it the word of God that is preached and expounded on? And not your three-hour sessions that these charismatics do. They do three-hour sessions of speeches that they do, and they wear people down. That's what they do. They wear. It's not biblical exhortation. It's not preaching the word of God. It's not going through the scriptures. It's not expository preaching. It's not preaching on the things of God. No, what is it? It's a bunch of garbage. It's a bunch of self-help guru uh, spiritism and nonsense. this was just about falling down we could have come in here at 9 45 and gone one two three we all fall down we could have gone home it's about yielding. you should have you should have done that because it would have been more profitable than what you're doing now it's about yielding it's not like an orangutan or something Now, I'm going to show you another video, and I want you to get this, the, why I call these guys sorcerers. Well, first of all, this guy spent all this time talking about nothing. Do you realize he spent all this time talking about an anointing? Talking about the effects of an anointing? Talking about the characteristics of not really anything. He's not preaching the Bible. (laughs) Does anybody get the feeling that this... Okay. They call this laughing in the spirit manifestation. And they have this picture of Jesus the Messiah here. But to me it looks like he's looking down on him like, what are you doing? That's all. I almost get this. I mean, obviously, I don't believe in images of Christ. But the point is that, look at this. It's almost like he's looking at him like, really? What a bunch of nonsense. What is wrong with you people? Look at that look. That looks like, you loser. You absolute loser. How would you like to be known as the church where people just come, fall on the floor, and laugh all the time? 
and no Bible pre Watch this because I'm going to show you some videos where no Bible preaching, no prayer, no earnestness, no sanctification, no glorification of God, no glory or praise or honor given to God. Just a bunch of nonsense. He doesn't use a Bible. He stands there the whole time and does nothing. We were in Jerusalem two years ago in the upper room at 9 o'clock in the morning, and she got like that. I had to carry her out of the upper room. And I'm walking down the streets of Jerusalem carrying her, and everybody looked like we're crazy. And I go, no, she's not drunk as you suppose. Oh, yeah, that's his daughter who does this, like, all the time. He said she's done it, like, like since she was, like, two and a half years old. Remember that video I showed you? That his daughter did that since she was, like, two and a half years old? Yeah, because he, he's stinking got her possessed with devils at two. People don't mind reading into the Bible. They just get shocked to see it happen in real life. That's not real life. You show me anywhere in the Bible where all they're doing is laughing the whole time. As long as it's in the Bible, we can believe it. But the moment it comes into a living reality, uh, you mean it's real? <laughs> Will you let him touch you? Will you let him fill you? Will you let him fill you to overflowing? Will you allow him? To cause you to get beside yourself? Really? Because that's a proof of the Spirit of God working in you? Is you act like an epilept epileptic fool? Like you purposely put yourself into like an epileptic fit? I'm not talking about people who really have epilepsy. I'm talking about like this fit of rage. You know, Mohammed used to do the same thing. Mohammed used to do the same thing. He would fall down in trances and have and have like and fall down in, in fits. That's what he would do. So would Joseph Smith, by the way. Because it's only when you get beside yourself that you can actually do what God's called you to do. Nor Northern Cal, whatever, ask me, what is this foolishness, though? What is it? It's called Pentecostalism. That's what Pentecostals do. That's what they've always done. That's their history of doing. It's Pentecostals and Charismatics. Here's another one I want to show you. That's why these guys are sorcerers. Now, when you get up here, there will be a message from the Lord. You'll need to stand on one of these steps. I don't know why that is, but stand on one of these steps. When you get up here, there will be a message from the Lord on your heart. I want you to deliver it to the becoming. No, 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 on these steps. Now, no, that ain't enough. Yeah, that, that's good right there. Praise the Lord. Rise up this day and be filled afresh with the new wine of the Holy Ghost. Rise up this day and oh, sepala manama erepe eribo ahaha. Oh, koridiesta ahaha. Oh, refied ahaha. Oh, repasianama to drink, to drink, to drink, to drink. Listen, listen to the mantra. This is what all the Hindus do. That these are just mantras to get people into a a spirit. To drink, to drink, to drink, to drink, to drink. 
O Sikaya, we drink parumbo, mende breve viva, ambrosto cora della brevivia. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. We're not worried what other people think. No, uh -huh. doesn't matter what they think. <laughs> oh, no bore di esta Oh, of course not. We don't, we don't care what anybody else thinks, right? You don't care what God thinks. Oh, Oprah. Oprah. Father sees what you see. Yes, the angels are seeing what you are seeing. Oh, oh, it is. Oh, the angels are seeing what you are seeing. Yeah, they're seeing what you're seeing, all right. A bunch of devils. Good. Look, look, says the Lord. Look, 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 look into the realm. Oh, ha, 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 ha. Look into the realm. Why don't you just look into your Bible? See, this is the problem with the charismatics and the Pentecostals. This is the deal with the Pentecostals. This is what they do. This is really their whole their whole game to get you off of the Bible and get you onto that. Ha, ha, oh, you are chasing gifts, chasing feelings, chasing emotions. Moving into the realm. Ha, hoka, hila, hora, yawakoka, ya, ha, urikate, tri, ha, ha, la, he, ma, ose. You are moving higher into the spirit realm. You are being lifted like. You're, be, you're moving higher into the spirit realm? Really? Where does God say we're supposed to do that? Right? I, you're moving higher into the spirit realm. You're not supposed to be moving higher into the spirit spirit realm. Right? You pray to the Lord. That's what you do. You pray to the Lord. You don't work your way up into a spiritual realm somewhere else. You are being lifted oh, into the realm of the dynamics of the revelation knowledge of God. See, yes, hear, hear the word of the Lord. Hear it, hear the voice of the word of the Lord. Yes, hear the voice of the word of the Lord in the spirit. It is talking to you now. There's a realm of the supernatural. God says, stir it up. Stir it up. You've walked in it. You've seen it. Oh, but it's going to come in a greater dimension and in a greater way. For many, because of excesses of fear to step over, and they've actually pulled themselves back. But you're not, because you know the real and you know the genuine, and so you'll step over and run. Run! Run! Run with the move of God. Run with the move of God. Run! Yeah, because when the Bible talks about running the race, it's literally talking about some guy smacking you the belly and you start breakdancing on stage. Because that's what it means, right? So when I look at Hebrews chapter... When I look at Hebrews chapter 12... Wherefore, seeing also we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest you be wearied and faint in your minds. So yeah, that's what he's talking about. When he says you're going to run with God, he's talking about getting up on stage, getting smacked in the belly, 
and break dancing across the stage. Oh, your churches are going to fill up. I'm going to sweep the streets. I'm going to fill your churches. I'm going to fill your churches. I'm going to fill. Look, look at this guy down here. He's going back and forth on the ground, rocking back and forth. Fill your churches. Say the Lord. That's what I'm preparing you for. That's why I sent you here. And that's why I'm pouring the rain on you. Well, now. Okay. Let's see here. Here's a classic example, this video says, of how charismatic theology undermines the centrality and authority of God's word. And here's what I want you to think about. Think about this. Because this is the swerve. This is what sorcerers do. I know this is different, but... Uh, you know... I didn't intend to go this way. Totally begin with, I had a good sermon. Thoroughly scriptural. Thoroughly scriptural. I had a great sermon. But the Holy Ghost got a hold of me. So the Holy Ghost got a hold of you and took you away from the Bible. Hmm. So it's an anointing that takes you away from God's word into emotions and to do what you want. Amen. And I learned a long time ago to follow him. Let me ask, let's do a pop quiz here. Can you say that you believe God and that you're following God? that you're following the Holy Ghost, but ignore his word and do things contrary to his word? Is that, does that mean I'm following God or does it mean I'm saying I'm following God, but I'm ignoring the plain scriptures? You tell me. Think about it. Is that scriptural to say I'm following God? Oh, I'm following the Holy Spirit's leading, but it's leading me away from the book. See, I kind of thought that Northern Cal was a was a troll because the way they were agreeing with me so much and overly pushing it. I was going to tell Mike about it because I could see that it kind of looked like a troll to me because anytime anybody does that in a flattering way, I pick up on it pretty easily. And I, that's what I, that's what I think that they're doing. Not that I care much because nobody's really going to fall for it. But I saw it. I looked at it. I, it's the first thing I thought was that it's a troll. I mean, especially the the all caps letters and just the whole thing. I, I just, I thought it was a troll. And I was going to say something about it. I was going to, but I caught on to it. You know, but I just kind of, didn't pay much attention to it. I just let it go. But yeah, I know. I think so too. But that's okay. But I want you to see how they say.
I want you to see how they say they're following God. Amen. All right, we'll see what we can do here. Okay. So Because, see, the Holy Ghost led him to stand there and laugh like that for, like, 20 minutes instead of preach. Well, I believe a spirit is leading him to do that. Do you think do you think the whole tongue flicking thing like a serpent just shows what spirits inside of him? See, I think he's literally possessed. Uh, uh, okay. Uh. <laughs> So in other words, you have to be possessed in order for people to actually come and listen to you do this. Right. I mean, you have to be possessed for people to come and actually like crowds of people to listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> so the entirety of this the entirety of this is him not being sober <laughs> so this is an anointing what does the bible say about anointing talks about it david was anointed prophets were anointed right priests were anointed kings were anointed Saul was anointed with a vial and not with a horn. Second Corinthians chapter one, verse number 21. Now he which established, establisheth us with you in Christ and hath anointed us as God, who hath also sealed us and given the earnest of, of the spirit in our hearts. So Paul says there's an anointing. Uh, it says here in 1 John 2, 7, or 2, 27, But the anointing which ye have received of him abideth in you, and ye not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things, it is truth, and is no lie, that even as it hath taught you, you shall abide in him. Does that look like it's an abiding in him? Now, eight times, 
the scriptures say for the new believer? That number eight is that number eight. is the number of regeneration. Now look what it says here. For whether we be beside ourselves, it is of God, or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. 1 Thessalonians 5, 6. Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith. But let us watch and be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love for a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but obtained salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ. But let us who are of the day be sober. Titus, at the age men be sober. Does he look like he's sober? I'm not saying you don't laugh sometimes. Of course you're gonna. But he's not preaching the Bible. They show up to these sermons, these these services, and nobody's preaching. They may teach the young women to be sober. Well, how do they teach them to be sober? To love their husbands and to love their children. That's how you teach sobriety to a woman. Get your heart where it needs to be, on your husband and on your children. That's teaching a woman sobriety. The age men, that they be sober. Well, how do, they, how do you teach that to them? That they're grave, temperate, sound in faith, in charity, and in patience. Look what he says here. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. And be sober. And hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lust in your ignorance. But as he that which has called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Because it is written, be ye holy for I am holy. The eighth time that be sober is mentioned. That number of regeneration, right? That number eight. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Whom resist steadfast in the faith, knowing the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. Counter that with the other anointing, this one. So they they walk around like they've got superpowers to throw the anointer around. And that's what they do. They take the anointer and they just throw it. They I mean they just throw the anointer. Right? Everybody gets a anointer. So this is really what they believe the power of God is. Ha, ha, ha. 
Hallelujah. 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 See, he keeps saying the same word over and over again. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. But it's it's all it's a mantra. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Actually, this is the one I wanted to sit I wanted you guys to see. Hang on a second. We're alive tonight because of it. Our success does not depend on what the rest of the world does. Our success depends solely on what the Creator has already done. Hallelujah. And we stand in victory at the crossroads of the ages. The crossroads of the ages? What an occultic piece of garbage. <laughs> Glory to God. Hey, you know who we are? Yeah, you're a bunch of devils. Has it dawned on you yet who we are? We are the first generation in the history of the human race that will see humanity for the first time in its history with no contact with Satan. Oh my goodness. Did you hear what he just said? He said that we are the first generation of humanity that will see no contact with Satan. human contact and we're it hey, hey, hey. we get to watch him get kicked into the pit The last enemy that will be put under the feet of Jesus. Does anyone at all understand what that guy is talking about? Because it makes no biblical sense at all. None whatsoever. Is not going to be put under the feet of Jesus any other way than all the rest of it has. This is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. faith people yes I am I'm getting worse and worse and worse I'm getting worse about it every day I thought I thought I was all for it I thought I was after it I thought I talked about it a lot 30 years ago when I first got in all this oh why? That is child's play back there then. I never been so hooked up, tangled up, <laughs> messed up with Jesus in all my life, man. And I'm hunting more. Hallelujah. All right. We're in agreement, right? We're here to stay, right? You can be seated. Open your Bibles to the book of Ephesians. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. I was sitting right up there in that choir loft one night, and uh, <laughs> Brother Hagin was ministering, and, and he walked away from the platform, you know, and he, he starts, you know, wandering around all over the place and doing what he does. And uh, he just, you know, he's come walking back there. And... Uh, when he turned around, he turned around and headed that way, I thought, here he comes. <laughs> and sure enough, I mean, I don't want to thought to, here he comes. He just comes around and just walking just as straight as me. 
I thought, oh God, what are you going to do to me now? Or what are you going to do for me now? Or what are you going to do about me now? <laughs> and he just walked up there to me, swung his arm at me and said, Joy! Lord, I needed that. Yeah, because see, like, I can walk up to Luke. Luke's standing over there right now. I can walk up and go, Joy! And just hit him with the joy. Hit him with the joy bell, yeah. Joy! I was in bad shape. I needed the joy of the Lord. And it began that night. So some guy walking by you and smacking you with the joy gun, it gives you joy. That's what gives you joy. The seed of it was planted inside me that night. And it started growing. And it began to develop. And it began to grow inside me. Well, then camp meeting. Oh, dear God. And I guess the stalk was full grown. Because he walked, he walked over there by me Monday night at camp meeting. And he said... Joy! And uh, right here. You know where that is? Right there? Where the snake is coiled up down there? You see that? See that? Look. That's where the joy comes, in the serpent seed right there. See it? See that? A bit deeper than anything had ever hit me before in my Christian experience. Went right straight up on the inside of me. Like a piston inside of an engine. <laughs> but then it didn't go back down. <laughs> Pick me up off of that seat. My feet... <laughs> My feet went about that high off of the floor. <laughs> and I hollered, hey! <laughs> I, I never hollered hey like that in my life. I mean, I, I guarantee you people heard me outside on the street downtown. I hollered hey. I landed about three foot out on the floor. I went back and watched it on the video. We got, we got, back, we got back to the hotel that night. I'm laying there in the bed. <laughs> now, there's, you know, I know I've, I've seen a lot of people shake in church. <laughs> and uh, there are shaking churches, you know. <laughs> but the real test is if you're still doing that when you get to bed at night. <laughs> Yeah, cause like that's normal to go to church and then and then and then twitch like that and shake and twitch like that. That's so normal. That's just that's that's the Neutner. I've met some people that did some things like that before. <laughs> he said they were cold though. It's kind of weird. Every time I jump, Gloria would say, "Glory be to God." <laughs> I'm laying there jumping, and she laying there praying, and I'm going, whoa, man, if we ain't a pair, praise God. And it's got to where now, all I have to do is just say hello, and I'm gone, man. I mean, <laughs> the joy of the Lord, I, I'll just put this where you can understand it, and then I'll go and get down to bed. The joy of the Lord is just eating me up. Praise God. I'm just eat up with it. I've been dipped in it. I've been rubbed in it. It's been poured all over me. And it's running on my insides. Hallelujah. Whew. Man, man, and that just ain't no off button to it. I... Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, so then so then it, it turns over to this part of the video where this guy is doing all his stupid stuff. And we've already seen this, so... I'm not going to go through a bunch of that. But the stuff that he says is pretty is pretty crazy.
Um, yeah, well. Having the impression that someone that couldn't run or to run. So there's somebody in the crowd, I don't know who they are, but they couldn't run, but they should run now. Glory to God. Glory to God. I, I'm sorry, but I hate it when he says that because I know it's so fake. I hate it when he says that because you can just tell it's fake. There'll come a release. There'll come the healing when you act. 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 Look at this guy. No Bible verses for any of this. No scripture for it at all. But if you get the release, then you'll be fine. Glory to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Just go ahead. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think I'll go to church tonight. And I'm just going to stand up for everybody. I'm just going to go, Hallelujah. And I'm going to just wave my hand and go, Psh, 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 Psh. And, and walk around smacking people and say, Wrap this up and call that the anointing from God. I know he's taking God's name in vain. Glory to God. Bless his holy name forever. Glory to God. Is this how is this how it works? Uh is this how it works at your church? Like this? Do you start doing a jig together? Like just guys and a lady walk up there and just, just start doing a jig together in the crowd when nobody's preaching anything? It does kind of look like a mosh pit with with crazy white people. Crazy old white people in the mosh pit. So this is supposed to be the power of God. What it basically is, is the same thing. It's basically the same thing as Simon the Sorcerer wanted was power to do something. Not to not trust the Lord with all thine heart. But some manifestation of something because that's how witchcraft works you got to be able to you got to have some manifestation of power samaka 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 
it doesn't take a whole lot of studying. It does take a whole lot of studying of the Bible with this, does it? It doesn't take a whole lot of uh, scriptural memorization. It doesn't take a whole lot of uh, uh, sermon work or anything like that to do this stuff, does it? Samaka. Samaka. Look, there's Kenneth Copeland. Look at him. So what's this about? Did somebody get saved? Did did uh, did somebody uh, find out they don't have cancer? Did uh, did people fall on their knees and repent and believe the gospel? No. He just walked around and went, psh, 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 and said semaka, whatever that means. Did someone switch their insurance to Geico? Is that what happened here? Semaka. Look at that guy, man. I'm not there. That guy can dance, man. <laughs> Can always tell the white people they just stand there and jump. So what exactly set them free? Oh my goodness. This is actually real. Okay, so keep in mind there's no preaching here. There's no biblical getting right with God. <laughs> Aaron. <laughs> I'm thinking about running the aisles in the room right now with Luke. I don't know. It's just like, not really. Okay, moving forward. Moving more forward. There's a breakthrough when you step out, amen? Oh, no. Let's hear this. gonna be the change because let me tell you something for a guy who in the natural who normally if you know me is quiet and reserved there's a breakthrough when you step out amen there's a breakthrough and you pastors are gonna experience a breakthrough in your life you people believe oh yeah some guy just coming up telling you you're gonna you pastors you're gonna get a breakthrough telling you Believe in God for things tonight was your breakthrough because you got out of that chair of religion and you stepped out. Do you hear that? You got out of that chair of religion. What are they talking about when they say that? They're talking about God's word. They're telling you not to follow God's word, but follow what you feel. And the music is designed to make you dance. The uh, the the goofy games and the, the false anointing that he has is there to make you do that. Hallelujah! Now, Brother Hagin talked about the book of Joel. Well, in the book of Joel, chapter 2, the Bible says, blow the trumpet in Zion. Oh, no. He's going to blow a trumpet. 
blow the trumpet. And in the book of Joshua, when they crossed the Jordan and they saw that great walled city of Jericho, they didn't just run after it with no plan. They got the plan from the Spirit. And the Spirit said, march around six days and on the seventh day. So they marched around six days. And they didn't say a word. They're just looking at that wall. They're looking at that wall. And Joshua said, and on that day, hallelujah, today's the day. Joshua said, on that day. Stop. Okay. Uh, Joshua said on that day, so it's today. Because Joshua said it's on that day. This is why charismatics hate Baptists. This is why. Because we're like, okay, that's not... That's not even correct. Like, that's that's not even biblical. That That isn't even following what, what happened. You can't apply that to you like that. On that day! Glory to God! On that day! Woo! And we've heard tonight from the prophet that today's the day of salvation. Today's the day. Well, you say, what's going to happen on that day? You're going to hear the sound of the trumpet. And Joshua says, when you hear the sound of the trumpet, shout and take the city. Hallelujah. Woo! And there have been some of you, including myself, you've been walking a wall around those walls for too many days. Six days, those walls of finances, those walls of fear, those walls of doubt, those walls of inhibition, those walls of religion, those walls of... Those walls of religion? What is he talking about? Oh, you got to break through and act like that. See, here's the difference in scripture, okay, between the false anointing and a real one. Here's the difference. As a pastor, as a pastor, or as a Christian, but as a pastor, I'm to follow the Word of God. And the Holy Spirit guides me and teaches me, just like He does you, through the Word of God. We're not to give in to our inhibitions. We're not to give in to... We're not to break down all those barriers and just do whatever you feel like doing. But we're supposed to follow the word of God, that God guides us through his word. Because the Bible warns us that... that that in the end times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. So they want you to drop your guard. They want you to drop your guard and just give in to what, the way you feel. Right? That's what they want you to do. Otherwise, you know, you're letting intellect get in the way, they say. You're letting your intellect know what you're what they're wanting you to do is not follow God's word. That's what they want you to do. They want you to take all the hedges off. Sickness and lack. But tonight, we've heard the word, and it's that day. What, what did you hear? Because I didn't hear anything. All he did was go, psh, 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 psh. Sounds like a camel peeing. I didn't hear anything. Now there's an anointing in my trumpet. And today's... <laughs> no, he did not just... Uh, did you just hear what he said? 
I'm going to play that again for you. Here he said, there's an anointing in me trumpet. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Woo! Woo! And there have been some of you, including myself, you've been walking a wall around those walls for too many days. Six days, those walls of finances, inhibition, those walls of religion, those walls. And today's the day that when you hear the sound of the trumpet, you're going to shout. And not only shout, you're going to rejoice. And we're going to take the city. Amen. Hallelujah. All right. Wait, I, I missed the I missed the anointing and the trumpet. Hold on. You hear the sound. religion those walls of sickness and lack but tonight we've heard the word and it's that day now there's an anointing in my trumpet <laughs> bet you want an anointing in your trumpet don't you no listen to me there's an anointing in me trumpet and today's the day that when you hear the sound of the trumpet, you're gonna shout, and not only shout, you're gonna rejoice, and we're gonna take the city, amen? Okay, what city? What city? Where? Like, for what? For Christ? For the gospel? For the glory of God? For the power of God? That I may know him and the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his suffering, being made conformable unto his death? Go. Look out. That almost sounds like the beginning of the song Jump Around. I don't know why, but that's what it sounds like. Here comes the king serpent of them all. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what I would like to, what I would do is I would take these people off to the side and I would ask them. I would just say, so what spiritually, how were you edified today from what you heard? Like how how did that grow you in your faith? How were you challenged? Thank you, Lord Jesus. What is he exactly thanking God for? Because nothing happened. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Got anything else? 
Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. Well, glory. <clears throat> Wonderful Jesus. Said out loud again, by whose stripes, by whose stripes ye, were healed. ye were healed. If we were healed, we were healed. I, was healed. I was healed. If I was healed, I, was healed. I, am healed. I am healed. Hallelujah. Wow, that is absolutely the, mo the biggest bunch of false doctrine that he just brainwashed them to, to repeat and to believe. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Not I'm going to be, I am. I am. I am. Hallelujah. All right, before we're done here, I want to show you the raw anointing. You've seen part of this before. But the raw anointing of Benny Hinn. And this is what they call the power of God. You may not understand this. I don't either. I don't either. He doesn't understand it. Well, God makes it plain when he works, and he makes it understand. When Peter healed, when Peter and John were at the temple, and he said, silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I unto you. They understood exactly by the, it was the name of Jesus that did that work, and the work made sense. And last time I checked, he didn't run around with Batman's cape smacking people in the head. But when the Lord talks to me, I obey him. It's just that simple. There's nothing more to it. So how do we know if it's God that is speaking to us and not something else or another spirit? Remember these verses that the Bible talks about. Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. Now, notice how it links the spirits with the prophets. So... For some of you that think, oh, these guys are just fake and they're not really doing anything. Now, some of their healings are fake. But they definitely have hypnotized the people. Look at this. It says, beloved, believe not every spirit. But try the spirits, whether they are of God. Why? Why? Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. So these there are many false prophets, there are many spirits out there. And we're to try what we hear. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. And they all and those prophets have a spirit. And you try the Spirit by the Word of God. Because, again, we're warned, now the Spirit speaketh expressly, that in the latter times, some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. What if I blocked it and went, no, oh, yeah. Probably not, but. I mean, this is Jackie Chan stuff. This is Kung Fu Theater stuff right here. That's what this is right here. I mean, can one Neutner block the other Neutner? Can these Neutners block each other's Neutners? Take it! Take it! Take it! Take it! 
Take the anointing. How exactly is that the anointer? How does that give the anointer? Take the fresh breath of the Spirit. Did you hear that? Take a fresh breath of the Spirit. Like it's spearmint gum or something. Right? Take some spearmint gum! Your breath stinks! It's, that's like how easily he just did that. So he's passing out anointings like people pass out Tic Tacs. Take the fresh breath of the spirit. I mean, it all, it sounds demonic. What spirit? So here's the problem. Okay, so Simon the Sorcerer wanted this power, right? He wanted this power. He didn't have it. But he wanted it. He had the power to deceive. God never gave him that power. God never gave him the power to heal people like this and or heal people and to lay hands on people. He wanted the power of the Holy Ghost. Benny has the power of deception. Pastor! Which is what Simon had. Because Simon bewitched the people. Remember Acts 8? But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one. And to him they had regard because of a long time he had bewitched them with sorceries. Cancer! All the pain is gone in his chest! We break it in the name of the Lord! Now, when he hit it with the third time like that, he meant it. He wasn't kidding. Holy, holy. Lupus, all the pain is gone. Man, he hit her kind of hard. I'd be hitting him back. Pick it up. What about throwing with her? What, what's wrong with her? Lupus! Oh, holy, holy! Yeah, because when does God show in the Bible when, when they heal people? When God healed people, that he that he pushed them like that and he smacked them around. Look at that, man. He just, that is clearly WWE. Look, he stole that from a WWE wrestler right there when he went and he spun around and did his spin a Rooney. That is the spin a Rooney, is what that is. That is the spin a Rooney. <laughs> Look at her. It caused traumatic symptom. He could not speak correctly. Could not what? He stuttered for 13 years. Whoa. Oh, he's, okay. When he winds up the anointer like that, that's similar to Hulkamania. Um, that's that's what that is. That's the Hulkamania. That's what that is. She was in the choir. 
up. She was in the choir. Her glasses fell up. She could see. See what? See what? She's in the choir. Her glasses fell up. And now her Oh, did you see him working that up again? That, that right there, that I've seen too. That's the Hulkamania flex right there. One, two, three. Did you see? I mean, that's it. Did you see it? He did it again. I'm, I'm, he did it again. He's got to shake his head there. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. You are holy. You are holy. Carl, why do you like Benny singing? Look, he's too old. You can't be throwing him around. That's Paul Crouch. He's getting ready to die right now. Knees and her spine with ruptured disc. Come here, come here, come here, come here. Man, I ain't never heard, I ain't never seen nobody dance to you or holy like that. See how they play the same song over and over again? He's like, give me some water because the anointing ain't covering my my thirst. Arthritis, her feet, they're twins. God heal them tonight. Whoa. That's gonna help her lower back. Throw her on the ground. That'll help it real good. What happened? Tumor disappeared. Man, he hit that old woman hard. So this is the power of deception. These people get home, and then they figure out. They ain't been healed. Nothing's changed with their life. Well, except maybe they might have some more devils in them. What's going on there? She had a stomach condition all healed tonight, and her husband had problems with his... How do you know her stomach condition got healed? 
Why, because she passed gas? Or how do you know that? Lift your hands to heaven, says, come on. Yeah, I believe the devil can heal people because uh, the false prof or the uh, the antichrist is going to be healed from a wound to the head. Soften up, my God. There's nothing more to it. Lift your hands and drink it in. No thanks. I don't want what you're drinking. So basically, yeah, that jacket is like possessed. It's got a devil in it. So this is why Pentecostals hate Baptists. <laughs> because we call that nonsense out. They call that being filled with the Spirit and or the Spirit's movement. And we call that devil possession. We call that deception. See, here's the thing. It's deception. I got to go. I got to get out of here. But it's deception is what it is. All right? It, it's all about deceiving. Anything that can get you off of the word of God, off of biblical Christianity, that's what they want to do. That's what Satan wants to do. That's the whole goal. Simon wanted the same thing. He wanted to take all of it. And he wanted the gifts to take away from the Savior. And that's the same thing Pentecostals do. That's the same thing Charismatics do. That's how they work. That's how they operate. Anyway, so not much has changed. It was in the Old Testament, or it was in the New Testament the same way. It was in the book of Acts. Tonight, I'm going to preach in the book of Acts. We're going to talk about the, how the Holy Spirit was given, the four different ways the Holy Spirit was given in the book of Acts. And one of them is the usual way. The rest of them were special, specially done for a reason. But the other is the continuation of how God gives his spirit through salvation. So anyway, I'm going to go. God bless you all. Take care. I got to go run on the elliptical. Hopefully my back's feeling better. I can do it, but I got to get up and get some exercise. And uh, then we'll get back to it on Friday. Sometime on Friday. I ought to be early on Friday. I need to be done by, or I need to start by 11 because I have a chiropractor appointment, chiropractic appointment in the afternoon. So I'm going to have to be done by, I'm going to have to start the broadcast at 11 a.m. Central Time and be done by 1 so I can get there. But uh, anyway, we see what the Word of God says. Don't fall for these cheap imitations. Nobody needs to give you an anointing. The anointing comes from the Holy Ghost, and it's not from the hands of any man. When the Lord Jesus Christ saves your soul, he gives you the Holy Ghost, and he seals you under the day of redemption. That's the work of the Spirit of God. Remember that. Don't fall for any cheap imitations of people that say they, they need to impart something on you. No. God has already given you that when he saved your soul. Now you learn from the local church. You get in there. You get, say, you know, you're baptized. You join the church. You walk in the spirit and you fellowship with believers and you live for God. But to have somebody want to put something on you like that is not what God's plan is. That's not God's way. Okay? Remember that. 
All right. I got to go. Have a good day.